let's talk about the relationship between obesity and cancer. Many of you may have seen my recent video raising awareness on colorectal cancer after the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman. And one of the things that I mentioned that can play into one's risk of developing colon cancer is obesity. You know, of course, weight is not the only thing that determines good health, and likewise, obesity is not the only risk factor for cancer, so please keep that in mind as you're watching this video. For those of you who don't know me or are new to this channel, my name is Austin Chang. I'm a gastroenterologist subspecializing in advanced endoscopy and weight loss endoscopy. I'm triple board certified in internal medicine, gastroenterology, and obesity medicine. A friendly reminder that I can't give any personal medical advice on this channel, and also another reminder to please verify who you trust online because not everyone who is speaking about these subjects may be an expert in those areas. Now before we even talk about cancer, let's talk about the definition of overweight and obesity. Now keep in mind this definition is a man-made construct based on body mass index, which is a calculation using weight and height. It doesn't take into account fat composition, fat distribution, and as a result, people with a lot of lean muscle mass may end up in these categories of overweight or obese. So even though we break it down into the categories of overweight and obese, it really is a continuous spectrum, so we can't really think of them as separate categories. So when you go from one category to the next, you can't really think that automatically your risk jumps a certain amount. It's really all along a spectrum. So as a refresher, overweight generally refers to a BMI of 25 to 29.9, and 30 and above is where you're talking about the category of obesity, and there are different subcategories within that. So now talking about the cancers, there are 13 different types of cancers related to obesity as identified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer. And this has also been highlighted by the American Cancer Society and the National Cancer Institute. And these 13 types of cancers include breast cancer, colon and rectal cancer, endometrial cancer, esophageal cancer, gallbladder cancer, kidney cancer, liver cancer, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, stomach cancer, thyroid cancer, multiple myeloma, and meningioma. Hopefully that makes 13, I'm not really sure. I think I lost count. Let me know in the comment section below if you knew about any of these cancers being associated with obesity. What's really interesting to me as a gastroenterologist is that six out of the 13 are gastrointestinal cancers, liver, gallbladder, stomach, esophageal, colon, and pancreas. Now in total, back in 2012, they estimated that 100,000 of these cases of cancer were linked to obesity. It's also interesting to note that the degree to which obesity increases the risk of these different cancers is different. When we're looking at liver cancer, it seems like obesity doubles one's risk. For gallbladder cancer, for instance, being overweight increases one's risk by 20% and having obesity increases one's risk by 60%. And now for colon cancer, obesity seems to increase one's risk by 30%. Now how they determined this association between obesity and cancer was comparing rates of cancer in two different populations those with obesity and those without obesity. So again, this is an association and those studies don't really show any mechanism of causation. But there have been researchers that have looked into various different areas and have proposed different mechanisms. And chances are it's a combination of all of these. Now the first thing is adipose tissue or fat stores increases one's degree of inflammation and that can play into one's risk of cancer. The second thing we know is that these fat stores are also somewhat hormonally active and that hormonal activity can also increase one's risk of cancer. Now the third thing is that obesity may indirectly cause an increased risk of cancer. So for instance, obesity is associated with an increased risk of acid reflux, often because of increased pressure in the abdomen, causing acid to reflux up into the esophagus. That chronic exposure to acid reflux can increase one's risk of developing esophageal cancer, for instance. The fourth thing is within the group of patients suffering from obesity, there may be some people who also have higher rates of other behaviors, like an increased consumption of red meat. So it might not just be the obesity itself, but also these behaviors that may also be contributing to one's risk of cancer. Now, if you can't tell already, there's a lot we still don't know about the relationship between obesity and cancer. And the fifth thing is something that has gotten a lot of attention, but we don't know much about, and that is the gut microbiome, the bacteria that live within the gut. Over the past several years, there's been a growing interest in the gut microbiome and its potential role in a lot of different health conditions. If we're able to clarify that relationship between the gut microbiome and obesity, potentially we can target the gut microbiome as a way to reduce one's obesity related risk of cancer. 
Now, what can we do to reduce one's obesity-related risk of cancer? Now, the simple concept is weight loss, but remember, a concept that's simple isn't necessarily easy to execute. There have been some studies that seem to suggest that patients who've undergone bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery potentially have a reduced risk of cancer. There's also been some studies looking at patients with obesity who also have cancer already. Weight loss can potentially reduce progression of the cancer or even improve quality of life. There's also been some thought in patients who've had their cancers cured or driven into remission that weight loss could potentially reduce their risk of recurrence of the cancer. Now again, the decision for someone with obesity to lose weight is a very personal one and it's often not easy and often cannot be done alone. So on that note, I think it's important for patients to have an open conversation with their doctor about how to reduce their obesity related risk of cancer and maybe be hooked into a system where you can get more resources, more help from dietitians and other specialists to help manage other obesity related conditions. All right, I know I covered a lot in very little time, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more from me, don't forget to click the red subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified every time I post a new video by clicking the bell icon. You can also follow me on all my social media platforms at Austin Chang MD. I'm on virtually every single social media platform and I use them all very differently. Now until next time, please stay healthy and I will see you in my next video. Bye!